Excavation. Uh, next, so this is the path of the, the new uh, rain garden. Follows the red line, so that fence has to come out. And we take that soil out and we bring it over to make the berm to hold the water. So we're not we're not creating needs for soil for the berm that we can't find here. And if we have extra soil, then we use it in the uh, the earth mounds. So next, please. And there it goes again. Next, please. And this would be another set of wooden bridge, which isn't on that Excel sheet. We need someone to create, you know, just tree, you know, poles of trees that skimmed with bark and a planking system, so it's a nice kind of rustic. So, um, and then that stone stream would follow that red line. Next, please. Into the woods. Next, please. And over there. Next, please. And it would. And it would just follow this trajectory through here. But before that gets done, the excavator is going to take his excavator, he's going to drive in there and crush those plants, but, and then to create the berm back in the woods where you saw my red hat on the, the pole. So that's the, that's the track of that. And it would look like those other slides that I just showed, hopefully. And I've sent some letters out to stonemasons to try to get them to buy off on those water bars and stuff. And what person has responded so far, but if everybody, if people can volunteer to do pieces of it, it makes, it makes it easier. Next please. So, the field. This is the field that was uh, cut and tilled, and this is the new outline of, so you have a situation where you have, you know, uh, little blue stem and switchgrass is growing up, so you have a kind of a mid-height meadow with uh, things like lupins and oxide daisies, black eyed susans, uh, uh, weed. No. And then you have these, and then the, plant, the tree list, we, we, we plant the trees in the space. Next, please. So this is, this is the, you, I don't know if you've seen this. This has been cut all summer, but I don't know if you've been out there. But it creates a nice, a much different feel to the whole, the whole athletic, uh, just rid of, grass back there. So the nature trail would be somewhere back in here. You'd have these clumps of uh, native plant materials, saxifras, elm, uh, beech, uh, striped maple, different things with different bark characteristics, very characteristic leaves. And so you have, so we're bringing some clusters of trees into the grassland. Uh, so next please. And this is, this is where the second bold, uh, uh, the second uh, boulder walk so there's two boulder walks. Basically, I'll show you, I have a picture of the little ones, so I'll wait. But this is where one of them would go. So this, you'd have the T-ball area there, and you'd have these boulders that parents could sit on and watch the T-ball at the same time. Uh, you know, more skilled kids can climb in and on rocks. And this, this gets pretty wet, so we'd have some, uh, you know, wet soil sensitive plants like winterberry and uh, elderberry and uh, pussy willow scattered in there. So when this gets wet, you don't use it anyway. So uh, next, please. And there's and this one. Oh, this is the area we're going to relocate. Uh, so Paula Renault and her husband Billy volunteered to move the existing play equipment and, and, and relocate it in this uh, mulch area, so it gets concentrated over there. Then we move the uh, we move the picnic tables over here. Then we have some more trees for shade. 
shade out there now, but so that's part of the plan. And then this is a different space that separates the little kids from the more active uh, stuff that's going on in the athletic field. Next, please. And this is just another view of that same meadow complex. Next, please. Another view of the same thing, and this would be where the dome the dome goes here, the seesaw goes there, and the table tables and shade trees. Uh, next. So this is something I did at the Cornerstone School. Um, so this is the little, the small uh, boulder walk. And you know, kids kids can engage with this stuff at their own level. So this is designed for really young kids, three, four five-year-old kids. So there's some there's some challenge there, but it's not really dangerous when you put you plant the trees around there. Um, so that's what the little one looks like. The bigger one would be bigger and longer and actually engage the skills of eight to twelve year olds. Uh, so this, I mean the kids just love this stuff at the corner stuff. And it and so next please. Just another few of the same activity. And the log walk is next. Uh, so this part of part of it, this isn't just a log walk um, because uh, what you try to do when you do these things is to design them so there's a lot of nooks and crannies so kids that don't want to play ball games or do the other active games can do this or they can come and the trick when we were doing this was to try to try to create these little these little niches so kids can go off and have little tiny conversations by sitting amongst the logs. So there's these little spaces here where you can imagine that these kids are huddling and have, you know, have their own private time if they want a private time. So you know you don't try to you try to uh, all, give alternative activities to kids that don't want to have a hard play. So they can you know they can build fairy houses or they can just have conversations and read a book in their own middle space. So this urban tree service said they were gonna um, donate the trees, so we need like the L-shaped trees and the Y-shaped trees, um, the T-shaped things. And you need somebody with the skills to fasten them together so they don't fall apart. So these are all, you know, wedged in and uh, buckled in with, uh, uh, you know, nuts and balls. And, uh, but you don't really see that stuff. Um, so next please. And then they have, you can see some of the spaces in there. So then you also design it so it's not like ankle traps. You know, you have to, people doing this have to design it so they have to imagine that, okay, we're not going to do this so an ankle's going to hit fuck, it's really easy. So there's some, there's some level of skill there, but uh, we have somebody who's going to donate the trees when they have them. We just need somebody to come and lift the things up and, you know, fasten them together in a safe way. And so, um, so that's another, that's another item on that list of things to do. Um, and the other, oh, next please. Okay, this is this is actually my backyard. And I didn't realize when I built it, I just built it because I had extra soil and it was fun, that what a kid magnet this is. I would want to climb I know. So, <laughs> yeah, my daughter and uh, Jane Adams' kids, Kate and Peter, they love that stuff. And uh, little Max Colgren, who's over in races, I have two of these, and he races from one to another, climbs up. Wants to get time to see how fast you can go up. But when my daughter was, you know, just uh, hardly walking, she would, you know, you know, grab the grass and pull herself up. Not to say that we're going to have these out, out on this site. I think we're going to have more softer and, and, and larger ones, so more than two kids can get on the top at one time. But the thing about this is, kids, it's the only time kids can actually climb up to something where they can actually have a view of their own landscape. You know, they're always looking down from 